Hi everyone, so welcome to part one of Animation Basics and After Effects for Science Communication. Uh, my name is Tom Ovenden and today we're going to go through setting up a new uh, project, a new composition, creating some basic shapes and then changing some of the attributes about those shapes, for example colour, size, scale, width, all those kind of things. So the first thing we're going to do uh, when you open After Effects is you'll be pre presented with um, something that looks a bit like this and we're just going to create a new project. So the next thing we need to do is create a new composition inside that project and we can do that in a couple of ways either by selecting new composition here or we can come up and select composition new composition here. So we're going to call this something useful like my first composition uh, my presets here are HDTV 1080, uh, that works for me, uh, and we're going to set this as a width of 1920 pixels by a height of 1080, and that reflects sort of a standard YouTube video. Uh, I'm in Europe, so I'm going to have a frame rate of 25. I think this is 30 in the US, but ultimately I don't think it matters too much. Both are fine. And I'm going to have a duration of 30 seconds for this uh, particular composition with a background colour of black, but you can change the background colour if you really wish here. And then we're just going to click OK. So the first thing we see are a couple of different panels. We're just going to go through them once in turn. So this one highlighted in blue here is your preview pane. This is where we're going to see everything that we're animating in real time. So we're going to spend quite a lot of time looking at this pane. On the left here is our project panel. This is where we're going to store all of our different compositions, all of our different assets like images or illustrator files that we bring into After Effects that we want to perform some kind of animation or function on. And down here is our composition pane, which is where we're going to bring all of those assets in order to produce the animation and apply the animation. And just on the right of that here is our time slider, uh, and that's where we're going to be able to view all the different animations through time. Okay, so the first thing that I tend to do, uh, it's good practice I think, is just to set up a file structure. So if we come over to the project panel over here, and we right click and we go new folder, and I'm just going to create a folder called comps. And then I'm going to drag my first composition that we may named a second ago and put it inside that compositions folder. Then if I click off of it, I normally create another folder, which we can also do by clicking the folder button down here. And I'm going to call that assets. And inside this assets folder, I would normally create subfolders for uh, images and illustrator files just to help keep everything organized. Because as you progress, it tends to get a bit complicated. So having a good file structure from the offset is generally good. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create a solid background color layer. And so if we just click in our uh, viewer pane here, just so that it's selected and outlined in blue, and then if we come up to the top where it says layer just here, if I zoom in, and we select that, and we come new, and we go solid layer. Okay. So this solid layer settings um, box will pop up and we can call it whatever we like, but we'll just keep it um, with what it's been preset to be called just there. We'll make sure that the width and the height are 1920 by 1080 to reflect our composition settings. Uh, and we can change it to whatever color we want by either entering a hex color code here or choosing something from this particular color spectrum or any other color. I'm gonna leave it as this dark cyan color and just click okay. Okay, so a couple of things um, happen straight off the bat. We notice that the color of our background changes to the color we've just selected in our viewer pane here. Across on our project pane, we notice that a solids folder has been created inside of which our deep science solid color has been placed. And down in our composition pane, we see that we now have a solid layer called deep science solid or whatever we just named it in the last dialog box that we've just clicked OK on. Okay. So now if we just have a look up here in the tools menu, the first tool I'm going to cover is the selection tool. And we can either click that and it shows that it's highlighted by being selected in blue or the shortcut on the keyboard key is V for this tool. And if we hover on any of these tools, it'll tell us what the shortcut tool on the keyboard is. So with the selection tool selected, we're just going to click off of our solid color in our view panel just so that it's deselected there. So we see if we click it, it selects and if we click off of it, it deselects. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create our first shape. So if we come up to our layer dialog again and we go new, but this time we're going to go shape layer. And we notice in our composition pane down here that a new layer has been produced called shape layer one and it's represented by this star symbol. So all shape layers and after effects are represented by a star symbol and all solid layers are represented by a square with the color inside it that you've selected for that particular solid. So if we just reselect the shape layer here, we're going to right click. I'm just going to rename this 
and we're going to call it square because inside this shape layer we're going to draw a square. So at the moment it's just a layer with nothing inside it. We still have to create the shape inside this layer. So the shortcut key for the shape tool is Q on the keyboard. Um, but if we want to select it manually, we can just come up to the toolbar here and this is the shape tool here. Now, if we click on it and hold down the left click, it gives us all the different options for the shapes that we can produce. So we could have the rectangle tool, a rounded rectangle tool, an ellipse tool, a polygon tool, or a star tool. Equally, if we keep hitting the Q shortcut key, we can toggle through these different options just up there. You notice them the blue symbol changing to reflect which shape tool we have selected. As we're gonna draw a square, we're gonna select the rectangle tool, and then we're going to come over to our view panel and we're going to left click and we're going to drag. We can see that a square, a, a sort of rectangle appears that's black inside and white on the outside. Maybe different colours for you, but don't worry, we're going to change those in a second. We can notice we can extend it along the x-axis or the y-axis to make it whatever shape we want. But if while we're still clicked and holding it, we select the shift tool, it automatically makes a square of equal dimensions for us. And then we can rescale that square. So now we'll just release the left click and we've created our square. Now, if we wanted to change the color of this square, there's two options. There's the internal color and there's the outline color, which is referred to as a stroke. So if we start with the internal color first, and if we just come up to the top panel just up here, making sure that the square layer itself is selected here in the composition panel, or if we select V from the shortcut key and clicking the square, and then we come up to this tools panel at the top and we'll notice that there's the word fill and then there's a black square. If we click on the black square, a dialog box will open up that enables us to choose which color we want the inside of the square to be. We can select whatever color we want and then click OK for that to take effect. Similarly, with the outside white line surrounding the square, we can change the color of this line by selecting the stroke and then choosing whatever color we would like in a very similar way to the internal solid color. So let's choose a nice high contrast color like this sort of pinky magenta and click OK. Just to the right of that magenta outline now, if we see the, where the number two is or whatever number you might have in this box, if we click that and scroll it to the right, we can increase the width of the stroke as much as we want, or we can decrease it all the way to zero if we don't want to have a stroke outline. We can also manually set this by clicking inside the box and typing in the number of pixel width that we want it to be. So I've selected 10 here. If we wanted the inside of this square to be a gradient color rather than a solid color, we can do that simply by coming back up to the same fill option here, but rather this time than clicking on the square of color, we're actually going to click the word fill, and that'll open up this fill options dialog box. Now inside this dialog box we have a couple of options. We can have it set to none, so that will remove it and effectively make it a hollow square with no fill, so of course now we can see the solid background color through it. We can have the solid color that which we were just on. We can have a linear gradient or we can have a radial gradient. So if we start off with the linear gradient and then we click OK and I'll just zoom back out again. We can now come up to the color square where we can see the red and black colors to select the colors that we want to take form in the side of the square. So zooming in a little bit just so we can see what we're doing. We've got the red slider on the left selected here and we've got the black slider on the right selected here. So if instead we wanted to change the color red, if we select the red slider and we can move that around inside and we see the color changes in real time, we could select a blue for example and then put it over here. And then again, if we wanted the gradient to go from blue to another color, we could select black, drag that to whatever color we wanted it to be. And then we could click okay. Or if we wanted to add an additional color in the middle of the mix, we can just click in between here and see where the hand tool appears and it says click to add stop. If we click there, we could then select and add another color if we wished. Similarly, if we wanted to delete one of these, you can't just click delete on the keyboard. You have to click the delete button and just be aware that for some reason, certainly on my computer, undo, so control Z or command Z doesn't work in here. So if you delete your color, you'll have to re-add it in manually rather than redo or undo. And then we can click OK and we'll just zoom back out again. Now to adjust the color gradient, if we look back in on the actual square itself, We'll see the center dot here and a line extended from the center of the square to this second dot and if we left click on this central dot we can now adjust the gradient by pulling this in or out and rotating it around to 
to whatever we want it to look like. Now if instead we decided we didn't want a linear gradient but instead we wanted a radial gradient, we could come back up here to the fill option, click the word fill, not the colours, and then we can select radial gradient and we see it retains the same colours but now we have a radial rather than a linear gradient. If we click OK, I'll just zoom back out and again we can grab this little handle here and adjust it to moderate the colours in this radial gradient. Now if we wanted to create another shape, first let's click V on the keyboard or come and select the selection tool up here in the tools pane and click off the shape to deselect it. We'll just come down to the composition panel and click this little arrow here to collapse it down so that we keep everything organised so we can see what we're doing. And again just make sure that the square is deselected by clicking off the shape. Now while it's deselected, if we come up to the shape tool or hit the shortcut key Q, we can now select another one of these shape drawing options. So this time we're going to draw an ellipse and make a circle, but we're going to have it stored as another layer because we currently don't have the square selected. So if we click the ellipse tool and then start drawing, see another shape layer appears down in the composition panel and it retains the same colour options that we were using for the square but we can change these again in the same way in a second and we can make this whatever shape ellipse we want or we can hold the shift to make it a perfect circle. So we'll just rescale that to what we want it to be, release the left click and then come down into the composition panel, select the new shape layer, right click and we'll rename this to circle. Click enter. Now if we come back up, maybe we want this circle to be a solid fill, so we'll just click the word fill again, click solid colour, click OK, and then we'll change the stroke colour to white, and we'll leave it as 10 pixels wide. Now it's clear that we've made two layers here, and each layer contains a different shape. So our square layer has a square inside it, and our circle layer, oh I can't spell, has a circle inside of it. Now if we wanted to create another shape inside this same circle layer, we can do so by making sure that the circle layer is selected, coming back up and making sure that the ellipse tool is still selected, and now we can draw another circle. Notice now within the circle layer down in the composition panel, we now have ellipse 2 and ellipse 1. If we keep that layer selected, notice that both circles are now currently selected. So if we use the selection tool by hitting V as a shortcut key and we move it around, both move together. However, if we wanted to select one of the shapes within this layer, if we double click on each one of the shapes, we can individually select them and then move them. But if we select just the shape layer, we can move both of them at the same time. To delete an object, all we have to do is select it and hit the backspace bar to delete it. We can then use the shortcut keys if we've made a mistake, Command Z to undo it, or Command Shift Z to redo. So Control Z or Control Shift Z on a PC or Command on a Mac. So if we hit V on the shortcut key and then click off to deselect all the objects, now we're going to create a slightly more complex shape using the polystar. So making sure that everything's deselected, we're going to come up to our shape tool or hit the shortcut key Q and toggle through and select the star tool. Then we're going to come over to our preview pane and start drawing. And notice that we draw a triangle and I've still got the left cursor clicked down at the moment and if we hit the arrow keys up or down on our keyboard we notice that we can increase the number of points or decrease the number of points by choosing up or down on the keyboard. And we can make quite complex shapes using this by really increasing the number of points. So if we now release we create the shape select V on the shortcut key and we can move it and reposition it. Now if we come up to the stroke options and we reduce the stroke width we can see the object in a little bit more detail and maybe we can change the central colour of it to a more desirable colour. And clicking off the shape to deselect it. We'll notice that this has now been created as a new layer because we had nothing selected when we created it and if we reselect this layer in the composition pane we right click and we'll rename it to star and hit enter. And if we wanted to subsequently change the number of points after we'd created the object, we can select the contents drop down just here, and then we'll select the polystar drop down, and then the polystar path drop down menu. And we see that points option just here, we can then alter the number of points by scrolling this to the right to increase, or scrolling it all the way down to three to create a triangle. So we can increase or decrease it having already created the object. 
So that's pretty much the basics of creating basic shapes and changing the colour and the stroke width and applying gradients and after effects on top of solid fill backgrounds. Don't forget to save your project because having created a project and then created a composition within a project hasn't saved your file yet. So come up to file, click save as and then navigate to where you want to save the file. Call it what you want to call it. So new project and then click save. Okay, thanks very much for tuning into this first episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out our next episode where we're going to start animating these shapes and applying basic animation so we can move the different positions of the objects through time, change their transparency and lots of other things. So thanks very much for tuning in and see you all shortly.